We're beginning a brand new um, four parts marriage and family series called Love and Respect. And what we're going to be doing over the next four weeks, we're going to be looking at biblical passages that teach us how to properly love and respect one another. Now, I want to give you a little reference as we go into this series. Um, If you don't have this book, I encourage you um, to get this book, especially if you're married, called Love and Respect by Dr. Emerson Egerix. This is an amazing book. Um, It's an incredible resource. You can also go on Right Now Media. He has um, several Bible studies you can do online as well. But this is a great book, and I recommend it to all marriages because it will revolutionize your marriage if you'll put into practice the biblical principles found here. Well, as we get started here today, I I just want to ask a simple question. In a time of conflict, have you ever had these times in a conflict whenever you're fighting over an issue and yet that issue isn't the issue? Make sense? And so you're in a conflict, and you're fighting over an issue, but the issue really isn't the issue that you're fighting about. And if the issue's not the issue, then what is the issue? Well, today I'm going to tell you, all right? Let me see if I illustrate it like this. Several years back, Susan and I, we were going to um, Panama City, Florida, and on the way there, that would take us, the route we were taking would go through um, Columbus, Georgia, and then into Phoenix City, Alabama. And I don't know what it is, every time I go through there, I get a little turned around. And so I asked Susan to navigate for me and give me little directions as we're going down there. Now, apparently, Susan was not giving me the directions the way I wanted her to give me directions. And so I start barking off some commands to her, and eventually, out of frustration, I pull over to look at the map, okay? Now, I soon discovered and realized that Susan had sort of shut down, and she wasn't talking anymore for the rest of the trip down there. And I'm like, what? All I was asking for directions. Why are you so offended by that? And so we're arguing, and so here's the deal. Um, Was the issue the directions? No, that wasn't really the issue. Then, If that wasn't the issue, then what was the issue then? Well, let me give another illustration. Suppose you as a wife, you go to the bookstore and you see this amazing book. And it says, you know, the key to marital bliss, communication. And you grab the book and you go, this is us. My husband needs to read this. And um, so you go, I know it doesn't have a lot of time, so I'm going to highlight all the key things he needs to read. And then you take that book and you put it by, you know, the end table next to his recliner where he watches Sports Center. And he comes in and he sees the book and he goes, Oh, brother, this is the third marriage book she's bought me in 12 months. And then he picks it up and looks through it and see all the highlights. And he's like, They ought to publish these things in yellow, you know? And you go, I don't understand this. And there he, just, he just puts it down. He refuses to read it or look at it. And he, becomes moody, and hardly talks for the next week. Now, is the issue the marriage book? No, that's not really the issue. There is an issue behind the issue. And with men, there's typically one thing that's causing this, and with women, there's another thing that's causing this, and they're completely different from one another. Today, I want to tell you what's causing all the issues behind conflicts. In fact, if I could give you one verse of the Bible that could revolutionize your marriage, today we're going to study it in Ephesians chapter 5. You see, in Ephesians 5, Paul gives his most amazing treatise on marriage, and then he summarizes it in one verse. Wouldn't it be great to find out the success of marriage in one verse? Paul gives it to you. Paul says, hey, let me put it on the bottom shelf for everybody so that everybody can be successful in their marriage. You go, I want to see that verse. Well, let's look at it. It's Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. Paul says this. To sum up, he's talking about marriage, each one of you is to love his wife as himself, and the wife is to respect her husband. Paul's saying, okay, husbands, this is what you're supposed to do. Wives, this is what you're supposed to do. Husbands, you love like this. Wives, you respect like that. And if you'll do that, then your marriage will be successful. You go, well, it can't be that simple. Our, our issues are complicated. No, it is just that simple, folks. Now, is it easy? No, but this works. In fact, let me explain why this works. Jot this on your outline. First thing I want you to see are the needs within a marriage. Every marriage has the same needs. What are they? Well, they're love and respect. Look again. 
Verse 33, Paul says to sum up, each of you is to love his wife as himself, and the wife is to respect her husband. There it is, love and respect. That's what every relationship needs. Every relationship needs love and respect. In fact, did you know that scientific research confirms this? Dr. John Gottman, who was um, head of the psych psychology um, department of Washington State University, led a team that did research for 20 years on 2,000 couples. These were successful marriages. They had been married at least 20, some of them 40 years. They're from all diverse backgrounds, socioeconomic, racial backgrounds, and yet every one of these successful marriages had the same thing in common. At the foundation of all their communication and conversations were love and respect. Now, what's interesting, as they were studying this, they discovered that the women had a major component in need primarily to have love, and the men had a primary component that they needed as respect. Isn't it amazing that today's research has confirmed what God said in his word 2,000 years ago? I mean, why? Because God set this thing up. God's designed marriage. He knows how it will work the best. Now, every one of us need love and respect. I, I look at it like this. Love and respect is like water and food. Food and water. If you don't have food and water, you don't live, right? Now, which one do you need the most? Well, you can go 40 days without food, and then you'll die of starvation, okay? You can only survive four days without water, and then you die. You dry up. Okay? And so even though both of them are critical, there is one of them that is more critical for you. It has to be your water. And that's the way it is. Everybody here needs love. Everybody here needs respect. But men and women are different, and they need different things. Women, their water is love. They need to know that they're loved. Men, their water is respect. They need to know that they are respect. And if you will give love and respect the proper way, guess what? You'll have a successful marriage. So let's look at it from the different, you know, perspectives. Because here's the deal. Men and women are different. Nod your head if you get that. In fact, turn to the person next to you and say men and women are different. Men and women are different. We're, we're different, folks. We are. I mean, God, the Bible says in Genesis, God created them male and female. Now listen. We're equal in worth and value to God. We are. We are equal before God, and yet we are different. Now, we live in a culture that basically says, no, 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 equality means sameness. And so what they say is they go, we want the men to act more feminine, and we want the women to act more masculine. Then that way, we're all miserable, right? But no, the Bible says no. We are different. God's designed us differently, and so we have different needs. And if you want your wife to feel Successful in a marriage, you have to love her a certain way. And if a man is to be successful in his marriage, wives, you got to love him in a certain way. And so, what are these needs? Well, let me put it to you like this. Let's start with um, the women. I'm going to put on my pink sunglasses today. And I'm going to say, now let's try to look at everything from a woman's point of view. And so, a woman, she looks at life through the grid of her pink sunglasses. And she views everything through a certain grid. She observes her husband in a certain way. And you go, okay, what is that way? Well, jot this on your outline. A wife's view is this. Does he love me? Does he love me? You see, a wife will look at everything her husband does and ask the question, is that loving? Is he loving me? Is he looking out for me? And that's why the Bible commands husbands to love their wives a certain way. Look at it. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. Each of you is to love his wife as himself. And even though a wife needs respect, guess what? Her primary need, her water, is what? It is love. It's love. Now, you may go, well, how do you know that for sure? Well, there's been a lot of studies to prove this. In fact, let me just give you an illustration from our culture. The greeting card industry. Did you know that the vast majority of greeting cards are purchased by women and given to women? Now, the, the greeting card industry, they, they want to sell greeting cards. It's a multi-million dollar industry, and they know that the vast majority that of 
women are those that buy the greeting cards. And that being said, I challenge you. You try to find one greeting card from a man, a husband, to a wife that says this, honey, I respect you. You won't find that card. Do you know why? Because a woman, though that's a need, that's not her primary need. She wants love. That's why the greeting card industry, they want to sell things, and so they're always looking for love. They want to make sure the wife, they know a wife views the world through the grid of love. You know what else? She speaks the language of love. She hears everything through the grid of love. That is the way women are wired, okay? So that's women. What about men? Well, I'm going to put on my blue sunglasses. This comes natural to me because I know the man's perspective. And, but a man has a grid as well. And a man looks at everything in the world, his wife, his children, his family, his co-workers, through this one grid. What is it? Jot it on your outline. A man's view, does she respect me? Does she respect me? Is what she doing, is she tearing me down? Is she disrespecting me or does she respect me? That's why wives are commanded in verse 33, the wife is to what? Respect her husband. You see, to a man, his water, though he needs love, the water in his life is the respect of his wife. That is his water. And he will dry up without his wife's respect. Studies show that as well. In fact, there was a a survey done of 4,000 men. And they asked men to choose between two things. One, both of them were bad choices, but one of them was, okay, would you rather be left alone in the world and unloved, or would you rather feel inadequate and disrespected by everyone? With that choice, 74% of men said they would rather live their lives alone and unloved in the world versus not being respected by people. Ladies, do you know what that means? It's hard for you to comprehend this, but it's true. Your husband would rather that you don't love him, but you respect him. Is that crazy? And yet, that's from a man's perspective. So you go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, who's right? Well, well, neither one of them. They're both right. Why? Because that's the way God's wired us. That's the way God's designed us. That's how we view life. And so a woman, she will look through her pink glasses. She will speak with her pink megaphone. She will listen through her pink grid, and she is asking everyone, you know, do you love me? Do you love me? And guess what? She expects everybody to get it. Why? Because all her girlfriends think that way, okay? And you know what? The men are the same way. Men will go through, and they'll look at their life through their blue sunglasses, and they'll speak in their blue megaphone, and they'll listen to everything through their blue grid, and they think that their wife ought to get what he's saying. Why? Because all his buddies get it, right? And yet we're speaking different languages, and it obviously leads to a whole lot of conflict. See, here's the amazing thing. You can have a conflict in two different groups, men and women, look at the same conflict, and they'll to- come to two different conclusions. You go to your girlfriends, and you say, you know what he did? You know what he said? And you know what your girlfriends are going to say? Girl, I can't believe you put up with that. Oh, my goodness, he totally is so unloving. That man just doesn't get it. You know what? I think that men have two brains. One is lost, and the other one's looking for it, Right? <laughs> Why? Because they get what you're saying. And then, you know what? Men who will observe the very same confrontation, they'll say, oh my goodness, did you see the way that woman disrespected him? Golly, what a witch. Get her another broom, right? (laughs) Now, how is it that it can be the same conflict and yet viewed so differently? Why? Because we're different. And we have different needs. We look at life totally different with a different grid of needs. In fact, we can say the identical words and mean totally different things. Let me give you an illustration. If you have a wife, she opens up the closet and she looks in and she says what? I have nothing to wear. What is she saying? I have nothing new to wear. Okay? A man can look in the closet and he can say, I have nothing to wear. And what is he saying? He's saying, I have nothing clean to wear, okay? That's the difference between the two, all right? Same identical words. I have nothing to wear. I have nothing to wear. And yet, 
It's totally different meaning. Why? Because men and women are different, and we look at the world through different grids. We've got all of us have our different sunglasses. This leads to a lot of conflict in marriage. So let's talk about that. Jot that on your outline. The conflict in marriage. Let's talk about this conflict in marriage. Because in a conflict, women will view it one way, and men will view it another way. This conflict in marriage. There was a study done with 7,000 couples. They asked them, in the conflict, what do you feel? The men, 70, I mean, 83% of the men said that in a conflict, they feel disrespected. And yet, in the same conflict, the wives say, 72% of them say, that in that conflict, they feel unloved. You see, the basic need of a woman is love. Basic need of a man is respect. And what we often do is we communicate the opposite of what your spouse needs. And that leads to what would be called this crazy cycle, this conflict that happens over and over again in a marriage relationship. You see, what happens is whenever a woman, in fact, jot this down, when a woman, a wife, feels unloved, it may spark these words of what? Disrespect. Disrespect. So you ask any wife, do you love your husband? Almost all of them will say, oh, yeah, of course I love my husband. And then you ask that very same woman, do you respect and admire your husband? Oh, no, I don't know about that. I mean, he's got all these issues in his life. You see, so what happens is the majority of women, they will gripe and complain and belittle their husband, and they'll go, well, I've got to, I, I, I'm just trying to help him out. I'm just trying to mature him. I'm just trying to make him a better man, and the man sees all that criticism. You know, and she's like my mother. You know, she's just telling me what to do all the time. She treats me like a little kid. Well, and she goes, but I'm just trying to make him better. Who's right? Well, what happens whenever the wife fires off a little disrespect, what happens with a man? Jot this on your outline. Men, check this out, men hear criticism as contempt. Ladies, you need to know something. Men hear criticism as contempt. You ask most men, does your wife love you? Oh yeah, she loves me. Does your wife admire you? Does your wife like you? Probably not. See, she's she's always got these issues with me all the time. You see, men will hear criticism as contempt. And see, a man, you know what? He's wearing his blue sunglasses, and he's hearing this criticism all the time. And you know what he's hearing? He's hearing disrespect. That's what he's hearing. And he's like, nobody talks to me like this. I mean, everybody at work admires me and, and, and thinks the world of me, and my secretary sure builds me up, and golly, my wife just treats me with total disrespect. Look at how the Bible points this out. In Proverbs chapter 21, verse 9, look at what God's word says. It is better to dwell in a corner of the housetop than in a house shared with a nagging, quarrelsome, fault-finding woman. That's God's word. I didn't make that up. That's what God said, okay? You see, ladies, if you're saying to your husband, you're not measuring up. You're not loving me the way I need to be loved. You're just this uncouth Neanderthal. You are inadequate. I no longer respect you. When you say those kind of words to your husband, you have crushed his spirit. It would be like your husband saying to you, I don't love you anymore. I don't want to spend any time with you. I don't even want to be in the same room with you. I don't want to have a conversation with you anymore. How long would it take you to recover from those kind of words from your husband? You go, years. That's the same way. When men hear this, they look at it as being disrespected. So wives, what you need to do is ask this simple question. I'll put it on your outline. Ask this. Will my husband interpret my words and actions toward him as disrespect? Will my husband interpret my words and actions toward him as disrespect? You see, a lot of women think that the way that they're going to motivate their husband is by disrespecting them, and it always backfires. It does not work. It leads to further crazy cycle. What's the crazy cycle? Well, then when a man feels disrespected, how does he often respond? Jot this on your outline. Feeling disrespect may spark unloving actions. Feeling disrespect, a man may come back with unloving actions. What is he going to do? You've shot him down, and so what is he going to do? He's going to justify himself. He's going to defend himself. Or what is he going to do? He may just back away and not say anything and shut down. 85% of men, when they're in a confrontation with their wife, will stonewall, will shut down, will remove themselves. 
And wives get infuriated by that. Like, I don't understand. We're just having a conversation here. Why don't we talk this thing out? And the man is just shutting down. You go, why? Let me explain why. Because whenever a man is in a conflict, suddenly we enter into warrior mode. And our adrenaline starts pumping, our, bar, our, our heart starts beating, and we're ready to throw down, okay? And, and so we've got an option. Either we're going to throw down and fight with you, or we're going to back away, which we think is the honorable thing we should do, and just shut down, okay? That's typically what happens. But listen, men, whenever you shut down and you're silent and you're not willing to talk about anything, how is that interpreted to your wife? Jot this on your outline. Here it is. Women feel that silence is hostility. A woman feels a man's silence is hostility. That's the opposite of love. And so a man withdraws, and she interprets it as what? This man doesn't love me anymore. Why does he keep shutting down? And that's why the apostle Peter gives this command to us husbands. In fact, 1 Peter 3, 7 ought to be a memory verse for every husband. Look at what it says. Husbands. Live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman, to your wife. Peter's saying three things. One, you need to dwell with her, hang out with her. Two, you need to try to understand her. And three, you need to respect her and honor her and cherish her. Guys, by and large, most women are not trying to be the king of the house. They're not even trying to be the queen of the house. But they do want to be the princess of the house. They want you to cherish them. And so, men, here's your one question that you need to ask in these interactions. Shout this down. Will my wife interpret my words and my actions toward her as unloving? Will my wife interpret my words and actions toward her as unloving? Because whenever a man, a woman feels unloved and a man feels disrespected, it is a crazy cycle of conflict that goes on and on and on. You see that on your outline there? It says the crazy cycle. What is that? Without love, a woman reacts. Without respect, a man reacts. Whenever a man reacts, a woman feels what? Less love, and so she speaks back in disrespectful ways. Whenever a man feels more disrespected, he comes back in these unloving ways, and it's this downward spiral, and it's destructive, and that's where a lot of marriages are, and they don't realize how to get off this crazy train that I'm on, this crazy cycle. Well, how do you get off? Well, let me give you an example of just how the crazy cycle may look. Um, I read a story recently of this young couple. They had only been married for five years, and he had been saving up money for their fifth wedding anniversary. And so he comes home. He's all excited. He says, sweetheart, I've been saving up money. We can go anywhere out to eat. This is our fifth anniversary. I've saved up money. You name the place. We'll go. And she says, well, that's exciting. This is awesome. Love to. And, um, and he says, well, you just you tell me where do you want to go, and we'll go. And she goes, well, I don't know. You decide. And he says, well, you know, no, no, no. I mean, I want you to decide. This is your tree. I, I've got the money. Where would you like to go? We'll go. And she goes, I don't really care. Whatever you decide is fine with me. You decide. And, and he goes, well, I want you to decide. And she goes, no, you go ahead. I'll be fine. I love it. Just you decide. And so he's like, so you're wanting me to decide? Yeah. Okay, well, um, I saw in my hunting magazine this restaurant nearby, and it's got this, these steaks, like five inches thick. They're so tender, you can cut them with a butter knife, and they're, they're just right off the, the interstate by, the, you know, by this truck stop. And she's like, what? You want to take me on my anniversary dinner to a truck stop? And he goes, yeah, it's got this great steak. Wait, you're, you want me to celebrate an anniversary at a truck stop? And he's like, yeah, that's right. And she's like, I'm not going to go to the truck stop for our anniversary. And he's like, I don't get this. You asked me to decide. I wanted you to decide. You told me to decide, and I decided, and now you don't like what I decided. And what happens? He storms off mad. She storms off mad. Now, here's the deal. This couple loves each other, and yet they spend their fifth anniversary away from each other. Why? Because it's a crazy cycle, and they didn't realize how to get off of it. Well, let me explain what's going on in her pink brain, okay? She thinks this. If my husband loves me as much as I love him, he'll know where I want to go. Because <laughs> the reality is, if you asked me where my husband wanted to go, I would know. 
because I love him that much. And if my husband loved me as much as I loved him, I wouldn't have to tell him he would already know where we should go. Now, does that make sense? You go, no, that doesn't make any sense. At least to the men, it doesn't make any sense. To the women, they go, that makes perfect sense to us, right? But that's the crazy cycle. Why? Because that's how we view things. That's how we hear things from our perspective. So how do we get off the crazy cycle? How do you get past this? You see, here's the thing that I realize. Most of you in your marriages, you really do love each other. But you just haven't learned how to communicate and relate to one another. Next week, I'm going to be teaching the men, all the husbands here, You come back next week, I'm gonna teach you how to love your wife so that she feels loved. And the week after that, I'm gonna be teaching all the wives here how to treat and how to respect your husbands so that he feels respected by you. And I'm telling you, it's just that simple. If the men will love the way the Bible says and if the women will respect the way the Bible says, you will have a successful marriage. But it all starts with one thing, and I want you to jot this down, the mindset. You've gotta have the proper mindset Okay, There's one choice that you can make that can make all the difference in the world in your marriage. Again, next week I'm going to talk to men, how they can love. Ladies, the week after that, how to respect. But you need to have a mindset. You've got to decide something. What do you need to decide? You need to decide either you're going to measure your marriage based on Hollywood or you're going to measure your marriage based on God's holy word. Do you you understand the difference? Because if you're trying to live out your marriage based on Hollywood, it will fail. But if you decide, I'm going to obey God's holy word, it will succeed. Look, I love the Hallmark Channel. Ladies, it's not real. It's not real. Your husband doesn't operate like those men on the Hallmark Channel. They don't, okay? The Hallmark Channel is written and produced for women, Not for men. We do not exist that way, all right? Men, can I tell you something? Your wife is not going to respond to you the way the porn sites are that you keep looking at. that's, 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 That's the porn industry geared toward men and how what drives them. Your wife ain't going to respond that way. That's not real. We've got to decide, are we going to live our marriage based on Hollywood or God's holy word? And whenever we decide, okay, we're going to live based on God's holy word and we're going to do it God's way, then suddenly it's successful. If we don't, it won't be. Something you need to know, every marriage needs to understand this. Every marriage has its ups and downs. Every marriage has communication issues. Every marriage has trouble at times. And so because of that, you need to make a choice. What is a choice? Here it is. Jot this on your outline. I must choose to believe the best about my spouse. I've got to choose that I'm going to believe the best about my spouse. Even when we're in the middle of the conflict, I'm going to believe the best about her. I'm going to believe the best about him. That's what the Bible commands you to do. Look at it. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7 says this. Love believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. That's what we're commanded to do. I am to believe the best about my spouse. I am to hope for the best in my spouse. I'm to endure to the end until that happens. I'm going to believe all things, hope all things, and endure all things. My wife, Susan, and I, we've been married for 34 years. And if you asked her when we were first married to make a list of positives and negative traits in me, she could do it. And I could do it for her as well. We've been married 34 years, and though the list may be different, because hopefully we've matured a little bit, the fact is she could probably still come up with a list of 10 negative and 10 positive traits. And you know what? 16 years from now, when we celebrate our 50th wedding anniversary, you know what? She can probably still make her list, and I can probably still make mine. Okay? Why? Because we're sinners. You're married to a sinner. In fact, your spouse is such a sinner, Jesus had to die for them. Okay, so we're all married to sinners. We're basically self-centered. And so I've got to make a choice. Am I going to believe the best about my wife? Because if I focus my attention on those negative things that irritate me about my wife, guess what I'll have? I will have an incomplete wife. And if you focus on, and if she focuses on all the negative things about her husband, she's going to have a deficit husband. 
And the more you focus on the negative rather than the positive, you know what's going to happen? That's the way you start thinking, that's the way you start feeling, and that's the way you start responding. And whenever you start responding based on the negative, guess what? It's always going to lead to a downward spiral in your marriage. So you've got to choose to believe the best about your spouse. Yes, we're sinners, we're selfish, but guess what? Your husband isn't waking up every morning thinking of ways to irritate you. You may think he is, but he's not. Will you believe the best about him? Will you believe the best about her? Why? Because perspective changes everything. Just that different perspective will change the way you view and relate to your spouse. Let me close with this illustration. Suppose you're on a bus ride and you're going across the state and it's late at night and you're tired and you're like, I just want to sleep on the way home. But then just before you head out, this dad comes on the bus with his three kids. He sits down in his seat and he just looks out the window and the three kids are just going crazy. You're trying to go to sleep and they're just yelling, they're screaming, they're bumping into you, they're knocking things down. And you're like, I'm trying to get some sleep, this crazy kids. And you get mad at the kids because you go, man, obviously these kids have no discipline in their life. And then you get mad at the dad, this is a passive parent that ain't doing nothing. And you control your kids, right? And so what do you do? Finally, you've had enough and you go and confront the dad. You go up to him and you say, hey, Look, I'm just trying to get some sleep back here, but your kids are out of control. And, and, and the man looks at you, and he's just, he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm just, I'm just sort of out of it. I'm, I'm sorry they, they kept you up. And he goes, we, we, we just, just came from the hospital, and my wife just died, and, and their, their mom just died. And uh, to be honest, I'm just, I'm just sort of out of it. I'm so sorry. And you know what? That little information changed everything, didn't it? I mean, I mean, it changed your emotions. Your emotions flipped. You were angry, and then suddenly you, you have empathy. You, you had anger, and then suddenly you're like, this anger is wrong. I should have empathy for this guy. He just lost his wife. The kids just lost their kids. I think I can give them a little empathy here, right? All it was was a change of perspective. Nothing had changed except your perspective. You and I are on, are on a marital bus ride. And there's going to be those times whenever one or both of you is just staring out the window, oblivious to what's going on. Or maybe you're going to be bumping into each other and irritating each other. And you know what? Behind every action, there is some pain. There's some pain. And you just need a change of perspective. You need to choose to believe the best and endure to the end. Why? Because if you will, you know what happens when you have that change of perspective? You're going to start giving the love and respect that your spouse needs. And whenever you give love and respect, guess what? Your marriage bus ride suddenly becomes a good ride. But you've got to make the choice. I'm going to love and respect my spouse. That's the key of every relationship.